All right, so we're starting with a Penny Enzyme Lab. Penny Enzyme Lab reproduction. This is not actually an actual class doing it. These are folks who have come in extra after school to dedicate their time to get this recorded for us. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. So trial one, we're going to put a minute on the clock, and what you're going to do is you're going to try to get as many pennies stacked heads up as you can. Are we ready? Right. Nick, you seem to have a watch on. Would you mind running the clock for us for a minute? Oh, sure. He's good at got it? So, yeah. this this. And... One, Hold on. One hand or two hands? We need person. One hand? Someone, wait, we need a person. So, okay. JJ, get up okay. there. Okay. Thank you. Every ten Only one got it, Nick? Only one hand. Every ten yeah. seconds All right. we say Every hand ten hand seconds track. we say new stack, all right? Ready, go. So in this, in this scenario, the hand is the enzyme, the pennies are the substrate. The chemical reaction that's taking place is you the stack. idea of stacking them you up stack. into piles yeah. of uh, as many as they can, making sure they're turned heads up. Good, Jamie. Oh, it's heads up? Go. That's yeah. Oh. New stack. Every 10 seconds we call a new stack so that we can keep them uh, organized and we can see the time. Here. Here. The data table, which you guys have all spent some time uh, doing, new stack. puts oh. that uh, together and we can graph it out over those 10 second intervals. New stack. <coughs> that is a nickel. In the interest of time going forward for the other trials, we're actually going to do this only on 30 second intervals. So we'll be on. Done. So instead of doing the full 60, but it gives you the idea. All right, so then what we would do is we would take these out. We would count out how many we had acquired over the course of the 60 seconds, each stack being recorded in through. All right, Con collapse a pile. What we need to do is we're going to denature. We're going to do a denature. You guys don't need to count them out. I don't need the data collected right now. It's just the, the resampling, a sampling. So we're going to denature an enzyme. So when enzymes get denatured in the environment, generally what we end up with is we end up with um, either a pH change or a temperature change, which would uh, alter the effectiveness of the enzyme, also altering the shape of the enzyme. In this scenario, we can't pour acid on the table. We can't put hot boiling water in those pennies and heat them up to denature the enzyme, the enzyme being your hand. So what we're going to do is we are going to denature the enzyme using tape. So we're going to tape the fingers of the enzyme together in this fashion. And Jessica is taking care of that and taping them all together for us. So what this does is it denatures the enzyme, denatures the enzyme so that it's a different shape, making it less efficient at its pro task. All right. There you go. There we go. Perfect. That's good. That'll be enough. Okay. All right. We got a couple people. We ready to go? Nick, we're in the interest of time. We're going to con condense this down to 30 seconds okay. instead of a minute. So there will only be three total stacks that you'll do. All right? On your count, please, sir. He's cheating. Go. So once again, the chemical reaction is them taking it uh, pen pennies, turning them heads up and putting them into stacks every 10 seconds. You got this. New stack. I'm not sure I mentioned it, but this is actually a Friday afternoon, too. Oh, Done. All right. That's all right. All right, so trial three. Trial three in this experiment actually takes coenzyming. So it's the idea of modeling the idea of a, a coenzyme. In a coenzyme scenario, in the, co in the coenzyme scenario, in the coenzyme scenario, what we're doing is we're actually taking two people and working. One is working as the enzyme, one is working as the coenzyme. The coenzyme is going to assist the enzyme in making it go more quickly as it would in a natural scenario. In natural scenarios, the coenzymes are actually going to be vitamins that you can consume. You can take them as daily vitamins. In this scenario, the enzyme, again, being the hands of these students, the coenzyme is going to be helpers or other students helping them. So we'll go ahead with 30 seconds on the clock and go. And every 10 seconds, you'll give them an interval. Interval. 
Are these stacked or I don't know what we're doing? That's fine. Thank you. Yeah, New stack! Done. All right, great. So we've got some nice large stacks, and if you had been looking at the stacks from the original scenario, these are significantly larger, which makes sense because you've got two people working on it. Okay, the last one is we are going to use a competitive inhibitor, and for our instance, because we are using, in fact, the enzymes being our hands, we're going to put a competitive inhibitor, which occupies the active site between the enzyme and the substrate. Again, the enzyme being the hand, the substrate being the pennies. The inhibitor in this scenario is going to be a block of wood that we are going to tape into the palm of their hands. Now, uh, some of these blocks of wood are a little bit bigger than others, but the reality is that we're still looking at getting the, um, the, the active site of the enzyme to be occupied by a block of wood. All right? There we go. So Jessica's going to get those taped on there for us. Thank you very much. Got a couple of people. And you'll notice that obviously enzymes have different sizes in our scenario. Everybody's hands are a little bit different size and shape. And so the blocks of woods are not all uniform. And then Brian's got a nice size block of wood. Austin's got a good size block of wood. And then Tanner's got a pretty big hand. So that block of wood looks tiny in his hand. <laughs> All right, and so we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. Thank you very much, Nick. And are we ready? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Go. And so the enzymes are not nearly as efficient as they were with the coenzyme. They're not even as efficient as they were when they were denatured. They are competitive inhibitor. The idea in a natural scenario is that a competitive inhibitor will actually stop the enzyme being functional. There's something occupying the active site between the enzyme and the And so these guys are just modeling that for us. Made in China. My hands are so small. Time! There we go. Thank you for your enthusiasm, too. That was wonderful. All right, so now we would count these stacks, and obviously these numbers are going to be less. It's a competitive inhibitor on those stacks are going to be there. We would graph it, and those of you guys who were out in the graphing, um, well, I'll post one of those images right next to it so that you'll see what the, the graph looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your assistance this afternoon. As I told you, we'd be out of here quickly. All right. All right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great afternoon. Enjoy your weekend.